All right, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at the last piece of that, starting at problem number 10. So um, let's just see kind of how that goes. Okay, so in question number 10, it asks us to find about all of the horizontal um, and vertical asymptotes. Now, notice it actually does not ask me to say anything about domain, just to find the vertical asymptotes. Now, the oblique is something we haven't discussed yet, but there's no questions that are oblique anywhere, so we don't really even need to know that right now. So one of the things that I noticed right away in this problem is that the numerator had a factor of x plus 2. So when I go to factor the denominator, um, this is a difference of squares, and that would be x squared plus 4 times x squared minus 4. This is kind of a little bit of a rare problem where I factored it once and it's kind of like when you took a fraction and you reduced it and sometimes, well, you can reduce it again. This happens this time. So I have my x plus two, but what I notice, although I cannot factor x squared plus four, I can factor this one to x plus two, x minus two. And I hope that you've been in class long enough to realize that when you see something like this, that's telling you that there's going to be a hole. So in the problem, since it all only asks for asymptotes, I don't even need to mention this little piece because that is not an asymptote, it's a hole. So it looks like I've got a vertical asymptote anywhere where the denominator would go to zero. And it turns out that would happen at x equals two. But this cannot go to zero, so I don't need to worry about it. x squared plus four is always a positive value. Now, as far as horizontal asymptotes, there is one because if you look at the powers, the top power is just a first degree and the bottom is a fourth degree. So since the bottom is larger, we said anytime the degree of the bottom is larger, there is an end behavior asymptote at zero. Now, something a little ha different happens in part B. Now, in part B, we can see in a sense that we have something like a 6x cubed and we have something like a, well, I guess that's 10x cubed in the bottom. Notice, whereas this one had the numerator had a smaller degree than the denominator. In this case, they're the same. So that makes a horizontal asymptote at six tenths or three fifths. There is a horizontal asymptote there because it's just a ratio of those coefficients. Now, if I go ahead and play the game here, the numerator does factor just a little bit. And um, probably not a great memory from your days in Algebra 2, but there is a little trick that you probably learned, or at least your teacher hoped you did, is that just like we could factor this difference of squares and you cannot factor a sum of squares, you can factor a sum of cubes. And it turns out it factors very nicely to x plus one. I always just say, well, what got cubed and what got cubed? Then you get an x squared here a minus x here and a positive one there. If you don't remember how to do that, the kind of the trick was you square the first number, you multiply these together and change the sign, and then you square that number. And so now you can again see that there is a removable discontinuity at negative one. Again, we're only asking about asymptotes, not holes, so I'm going to ignore that. And I have vertical asymptotes at x equals one fifth and one of them at x equals one half. And I'm done with that one. Now, moving on to the last one, number 11. And I don't think I'm going to even bother on number 12 for now because that's actually not going to be on the test yet. We'll deal with that later. So question number 11 says, let's come up with our own function that has a horizontal. Well, notice that's not zero. So it has to have the same power, top and bottom. 
That's what happened. That's the way that happened. Now, if I have a vertical asymptote at three, then I need to have a factor of x minus three in the bottom. And I also cannot have an x minus three on top because I want it to be an actual asymptote. Same thing for x plus four. We want to make both of these things zeros in the bottom because that's what's going to create those vertical asymptotes. Now, this time, I actually said I wanted a hole at a half. Oh, well, that's pretty easy. So if I wanted a hole at a half, I would put a 2x minus 1 here and a 2x minus 1 there. Well, I kind of have almost everything, but if you notice, the bottom is some kind of a 2x cubed. It has an x cubed in the bottom. So I need an x cubed on the top. Now, this is where answers will really, really, really vary. You could have all sorts of different things. So what I'm going to do, and notice these two x's would kind of cancel anyway, is I'm going to give the top a 2x squared, and I'm going to give the bottom just a plain old 3. Now, if you looked at it in that way, you would actually have a 4x cubed on top, and you would have about a 6x cubed in the bottom, which is 2 thirds. And so this is the equation that I came up with that worked, although this piece right here could be all sorts of other things. You could put 2x squared plus 5. That wouldn't change anything about where um, all of that stuff ran down. And so that should be okay. So this piece varies. These pieces kind of have to be there. These two have to be there and these two have to be there to create that removable discontinuity. But there's some flexibility in certain places. So that's why it says create, well, it's a bad thing. It should say create a, an equation of a function, not the equation. It, because there's more than one answer. I hope that was helpful. Like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and leave number 12 for a later date. We actually have not covered that this year and it's not on the test. And so I think I'll leave that till a little bit later. I hope that that was helpful. All right, goodbye.